Hello, my name is Serge Amélie. I'm a French photographer living in Paris and welcome to episode 6 of my Lightroom Photoshop and Photography Tips. Last week we did an HDR using Photoshop CS6 HDR engine. You can see here the bracket of photos that we used. Okay, that's the normal exposure, that's the underexposure and that's the overexposure. It's an old kitchen from the 50s and here is the final result. To continue our series on HDR and the various techniques available today in HDR, we're going to do a new way of HDR that just came out a few weeks ago in an update that Adobe did on Lightroom 4. It's Lightroom 4.1 that has the ability to do a sort of HDR within Lightroom, but we, you will also need Photoshop CS5 or CS6 to do it. You will see all the details in the tutorial. It's a complete new way to do HDR and I love it. It doesn't work on every photo because if, if you've got too much elements moving in the photo, usually it doesn't work well. But on this photo, it works pretty well. All the raw files I included, you can find them either on my YouTube channel in the description or on the Google Plus post that release this podcast. So I say, let's get to it and let's do this HDR with this new technique. Hello, here's a little tip of the day. Uh, I've been doing HDR for years and the main reason I've been HDR, well, first, to be honest, was because I like the HDR look. And, uh, and the second reason I was doing HDR is because I want to get uh, all the dynamic range of a scene. For example, last night I was in Paris taking the Alexander III bridge and it was a very constructive scene, meaning it was, you know, that there was a lot of highlights and it was a lot of shadows. So. Even so, I don't do so much HDR. I had to take three photos if I wanted to get the whole dynamic range of that scene. So here is the normal photo. Here is the underexposed photo. And here is the overexposed photo. I'm a Canon shooter, Canon 5D Mark II. And so I usually only do three exposures because that's the normal setting for the Canon uh, camera. Now, when I have three exposures, I have basically two possibilities. I can either put uh, I either use photomatics to uh, tone map blend them together to get all the dynamic range or I can use uh, the HDR in Photoshop now Lightroom 4.1 just came out with uh, a HDR feature in it and I just tried it tonight and I thought it was pretty amazing and I wanted to share it with you first let me show you the old way I used to do this so all I would do is I would take the first photo, I would go into noise reduction and reduce the noise, and then take all my three photos, click on sync, and sync the noise reduction on all three photos. The reason I do this is because when I go to export photomatics, photomatics has a tendency to uh, put a lot of noise, so I just right clicked uh, export to photomatics because I have photomatics installed with, you know, it's plugged in to Lightroom, and I click on export, I'm going to call this um, Photomatics uh, version. I have to change the name because I already did this before and if I use the same name, it's going to not import it correctly. So let me put on pause and I get back to you once we are in Photomatics. Here we are in Photomatics. Uh, all I usually do when I do Photomatics is, is I take my micro contrast and I put it at plus 100. Then I go into the light modes, in the smoothing light mode, and I usually choose between high or max. Uh, let's check out max. I'm going to take high. And then I would, uh, sometime I would lower a bit the gamma or make it a bit brighter, and I would, you know, do some luminosity. That's what I usually do. Uh, and then I would just click uh, save and re-import. So that's what I usually do when I want to do, when I want to get all the uh, dynamic range back. So Photomatics plug, you know, uh, is going to import back into, um, oh, it failed because I already done it. So let me show you because I've already imported the photo. That's the photo, that's the photo straight from Photomatics once it's been tone mapped. Now here's the problem. Uh, I mean, the photo lacks of contrast and it's got this sort of Photomatics looks. And if you look under the bridge, there's a lot of noise. Even so, I took the noise out before going into Photomatics, uh, which usually takes care of the problem. So, you know, of course I could, you know, I could do some, you know, contrast and, you know, try to uh, make this a bit better, but I know there is a lot of noise there. I can take the noise out, but, you know, I don't like so much noise because even if I take it out, I know some of it is going to be left. Okay, so the other solution I used to do when I, when I do this type of contract uh, scene is um, 
Well, let me first show you now what I do now, the 4.1 version. It's gonna be easier. So here is this new workflow. You take the three photos, you click, you right click on it, and you go to Edit, Merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop, okay? Let me put on pause until we are into Photoshop. We are into Photoshop. What I used to do is to go uh, put it into a 16-bit or 8-bit mode and do my whole HDR tone matting in Photoshop. And I, I must say, I don't like so much the settings in photo, uh, Photoshop. I don't think they're very clear and I just don't like them overall. But now, this is a new feature. All you do is nothing, basically. You just choose 32-bit, click on OK, and uh, it's going to create a 32-bit file. Basically, it's gonna create like one big file with all the information, the normal, the dark photo, and the bright photo, all combined into one. And I'm just gonna retouch it in Lightroom just if it, was, if it was a regular raw file. So here is the photo, the 32-bit file. I'm gonna press Command-W to close. I'm gonna say Save. And it's gonna put it back into, here we are, into Lightroom now. Uh, that's the trick. This is not a regular RAW file. It's a 32-bit file. So let me show you how I'm going to retouch that file. So basically, I'm going to open up the shadows so we get some details in the shadows. I'm going to bring down the highlights. And that's the point. You see, I open up the shadows and look at this. I almost have no noise. I have no noise. The reason I have no noise is because from the from this photo, which was the over exp uh, overexposed photo, you know, uh, there was a lot less noise. So, you know, I just have all the dynamic into one file. So then what I would usually do on such a photo, I would probably do the whites and blacks. The way the formula I do the whites and black is I hold down the Alt key, I take my whites and I just move it to the right until I see some pixels and uh, see how I went to plus 38 before I started seeing some white pixel. I will compare it later on to the one exposure photo so you see the difference. Then I'm gonna press on Alt and do the opposite, bring the blacks until I see a bit of black, which is the case here. Okay, now I know my contrast a bit better. Usually I override that by you know, doing some more contrast. And now I would balance a bit the lights in the photo. I find the sky is too bright, so I'm gonna click on ND filter. I'm gonna take exposure, bring the exposure down make an ND filter there, something like that. Uh, bring the saturation up. So this is this is not a course on Lightroom, but in what that does is that it puts an ND filter, uh, making it a gradient, uh, making it darker uh, from the top down to here and making it more saturated from the top down to here. So now I have like a, a nicer sky. You can check it out before the ND filter, after the ND filter. If you find it's too saturated, you can bring it down. If you find it's too dark, you can bring it down the exposure. Okay, that's... And then the next thing I would do is I would uh, take a brush, um, choose exposure, but go the other way around, make the, the exposure a bit bigger, make sure my feather is at plus 100, my flow is at plus 100, and I would just paint here a little bit under the bridge just to get some details back under the bridge, you know? But hopefully, just details, no noise. And you know what? I think that's the case. Uh, let, let's check it out. Let's go and still no noise because we have a bigger, a nicer dynamic range. Okay, uh, next thing what I would do is, uh, you see here, there's a little bit of a, a red cast from the sun. I would increase that. I like to have a little red spot. So I would create a new brush, uh, make it a bit more reddish. Um, oops, sorry. I made a mistake, let me go back. I would create a new brush by clicking on the brush, choosing temperature, and that's a new feature in Lightroom 4, you can paint temperature. I would increase the magenta and the yellows, and I would just paint here uh, where there was a sun. There's a little sun cast here. There's too much yellow, so I'm gonna bring down the yellows, uh, but I'm gonna bring down the yellows, but I'm bring, gonna bring, bring up the magenta to make it a bit redder. Okay, see before that brush stroke, check it out here, and after that brush stroke. Okay, and uh, what else would I do? I, that's about it, that's about it. Uh, the last thing I would do is just go into post-corp vignetting and make a nice 
postcard viennating. So all I did was like a, a very standard row development, but instead of doing it on one row file, I did it on a 32-bit file and I got a lot more dynamic range. So now let's compare. This, uh, let, let me first do, I'm gonna take back the normal exposure. Uh, sorry, that's the under exposure. That's the normal exposure. Let's say I didn't do an HDR and all I had was this normal exposure. And now I wanna use Lightroom 4 to retouch it. Lightroom 4 is very powerful on getting the juice out of a raw file. But even so, uh, you will see the result is not as good with the, than the 32-bit file. So let's open up the shadows. Okay, let's bring down the highlights. All right, uh, let's press on Alt and see, you see now I'm at plus 20 and I already have burned pixels. Before on the 32-bit files, I had to go to 38 before I got burned files because I have a, loss, uh, a lot less information in that file. So now I'm gonna do the blacks and the blacks also, they, they immediately, uh, become black, you know, less dynamic range. Um, I'm gonna increase the contrast. I'm gonna make the exposure a bit brighter. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing, take an ND filter, uh, take exposure, bring the exposure down, you know, uh, just get the sky to look a bit better. Something like that, more saturation in the sky. Okay, then I'm gonna take the brush Thing. I'm gonna take a brush, uh, a tint. Uh, actually, let's take a tint brush. Yeah, let's boost just the magenta and then paint here to make this a bit more red as we did on the uh, on the other one. So we give you know the same equal chance to both photo. Okay, and uh, then I make a new brush. This time I'm gonna choose exposure. I'm gonna boost a bit the exposure and I'm gonna bring some details under the bridge. Let's bring some details onto the bridge. Okay, uh, I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna boost the overall saturation of the photo. All right, so that's the best I can get of that one raw file. Now, let's compare it. So let me select the other one. Let's compare it with the 32-bit file. So I'm gonna press C to compare both photo. All right, and see, here on the left is the one raw file, check out. See how there is a lot of noise there and how there is no noise at all under the bridge on the 32-bit file. Basically, I get a much cleaner file. See how, the, how the, I get a tiny bit more details in the highlights. You know, that's kind of nice. Now, uh, and check the overall, I don't know, there is like this, that's so, the 32-bit file is the one on the right. Somehow it's, it's got, you know, you feel it's got more dynamic. It's, it's uh, there, you see how there is more details. Uh, here in um, in the roof here, you know, it's a bit lighter. Uh, here it's darker. See how there is, look all the details that there is here compared to this. So basically, uh, what does this mean? That means that basically Photomatix has become a tone mapping software. As long as you owe Lightroom and, uh, and you owe Photoshop CS6 or CS5 to be able to create that 32-bit file, you will do the tone mapping in Lightroom instead of Photomatix or Photoshop. And for me, uh, this is the best result I got. It's, it's better than all the HDR software I've used. Now, of course, uh, it's always a problem if you have objects moving. You know, it only works on scene where there's not so much movement, you know. But anyways, I wanted to show you with a real um, example so you can compare the three techniques, you know, the 32-bit the file, the regular file and the um, photomatics file. So, you know, as I do big print, I'm gonna go for the 32-bit file, much cleaner. Just a little note to finish uh, this tutorial. If you like this type of tutorial, you can go on to my website called photosearch.com, photosearch.com. And on the right, you've got an app store uh, option here. And basically, I have done uh, many courses on uh, Photoshop CS5, Lightroom, HDR, um, Photoshop CS6, uh, retouching landscapes, uh, just um, courses on using Lightroom for retouching. 
and you will find all of them on this page, on this apps page, and they are available for $5 either on an iPhone, on an iPad, or as streaming videos for any Mac or Windows or Linux system. So uh, usually it's two hours course and uh, it only costs $5. So I invite you to check it out at photosearch.com. Thank you very much for listening and I will see you some other time. So I hope you liked that tutorial. I must say since Lightroom 4.1 came out, I really love using this new feature. It gives you uh, HDR photos which have a very natural look, not much noise and um, I got into HDR in the first place because I just wanted to get all the dynamic range you know, of a photo, all the shadows details, all the highlight details into one photo. And I prefer the natural look, so for me it's really a, a go-to to do HDR. I must say it doesn't work in every case because if you have got a lot of leaf moving or a lot of uh, you know, people moving in your photo, it doesn't always give good results. But when you can use it, it's great. All right, so this week's inspiration is um, a great HDR photographer named Klaus Hermann. He's from Germany, and uh, this is his website. On his website, he's got a great HDR cookbook and uh, that gives a lot of research about HDR. Like, what do you do before going into photomatics? Do you develop your photo in Lightroom first? Uh, do you put your RAW file straight into uh, photomatics? Can you use JPEGs? He has done a lot of comparison with that that you can check out on the website. I think it's very interesting. And he's a very popular man on Google+. He's got like 1.6 or 1.7 million followers on Google+. He's a lot more famous than I'll ever be, but he's a great guy. So I invite you to check him out. Next week, we're gonna explore another technique about doing HDR called the DRI, Dynamic Range Improvement. Basically what it is, is that you blend the photos, not using any software, but Photoshop, using layers and gives also a very natural result. It's a lot longer to do than what we did in Lightroom 4.1, but it can give lovely results. Thank you for being here and I'll see you next week.